Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with the first episode of Stellaris, the console edition. Now, this is a game that I kind of stumbled upon due to other streamers, so I know a little bit, I played it a little bit, I, I, I have some experience. I wouldn't say it's a lot of good experience, <laughs> and I would say that, um... I am bad at the game. So anyone who's coming into this expecting good gameplay, first off, why the fuck do you think you would get that out of my channel? And second off, uh, that's not going to happen. So uh, just fair warning, letting y'all know. While I do intend on being, you know, relatively okay with the game, uh, there will be mistakes and uh, oopsie doodles that I make. Uh, especially because, well, I'm going to do a little different a thing than what I usually do. I will be doing it with Iron Man on. So, any mistake I make will be super duper permanent. And if I fuck it up, I fuck it up. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a little bit on the fun side. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the word we'll use. <laughs> anyway, um, that also said, you might notice up in the uh, top right corner, uh, the companies behind this game, uh, Paradox Interactive and Tantalus, uh, they also made City Skylines. So they already have a decent pedigree of good games, uh, especially ones that they then transferred over to console uh it'll just it just takes some tweaking to get all of that taken care of and uh as far as i'm aware they've changed up the game significantly since launch because there were some things that were not great at least the way i heard it so um we'll see how that goes Personally, I love the game. Whatever weird, quirky flaws it has and all. Um, it's... Th there will be some things that will pop up that I'll, you know, speak on. On how difficult it is to deal with. But, uh, other than that... Uh, that's it. That's pretty much going to cover everything. Now. That said. Let's get into it. I have made two <laughs> two races um well two species rather the uh, imperial service of ladle um this is a twitch bit <laughs> this is a twitch joke <laughs> a little bit because clearly they're a furry but the species name is not foray <laughs> And the planet's name is Waifu. <laughs> they are an imperial enlightened monarchy who are decadent deviants in traits, but are adaptive, talented, and resilient. I, I'd say that's rather true of the person themselves, but um, it, it's, it's a bit. It's a bit, but it's a fun bit. It's a very fun bit on my end. And... Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I throw this bit into the whole thing? They also have a, a flag of a bird <laughs> for Mrs. <laughs> which is one of their buddies. And it's black and red. <laughs> oh man, some of the things, some of the things I, I did in the creation of this species. Uh, it's great anyway they will always appear in a regular game so uh, we will see them when we start up this is mine the <laughs> empire of felony uh, because while well, they look like big cat creatures and gods damn it um, uh, I'm a cat so there you go <laughs> that's how that works um, otherwise everything looks Okay, we're sedentary, so we don't like to move around. Boy, ain't that the truth for me. Uh, <laughs> but we are enduring, strong, and talented. Uh, our ethics 
have egalitarian, xenophile, and militarist. So we're not too heavy in one direction. Uh, we kind of have it all more or less spread out. We also have a warrior culture and distinguished admiralty. And we start off with nuclear missiles. Nuclear vessels. <laughs> Whatever the fuck the bit is. I haven't watched it in forever. Okay. And uh, ladles uh, has fucking authoritarian <laughs> xenophile militarist. Again, they don't lean in any particular way, but that's how that goes. Um, <laughs> cutthroat politics and philosopher king. So, and they start off with lasers. Because I figured that would be a thing that Ladle would like, lasers. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. But I figured she would like lasers. So there you go. Anyway, that said, and uh, that done, <laughs> that explanation, let's get right into it. With, uh, <laughs> let's turn on um, Iron Man mode before we do anything else. We'll be doing a medium-sized galaxy with, let's put it middle of the road and have uh, four uh, AI empires. Uh, AI advanced starts. Uh, I kind of don't want to deal with an advanced starting AI until later on. Uh, one, one fallen empire, just one. Habitable worlds. Let's kick that down to 1.25. Just a, a little bit, a little bit more of a Goldilocks zone for uh, solar systems, but not not outlandishly high. I mean, I could go to pretty much every friggin' system has a habitable world, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it relatively natural. Uh, AI aggressiveness will be normal. The difficulty will be normal. Empire placements, uh, clusters or random. No, no. Clusters that they'll, they'll try and keep themselves sequestered into a particular zone that, uh, won't have them popping up every which way in every different system. Like on the other side of the galaxy that would be a little annoying that's that's not what we're gonna have dealing with advanced neighbors if if there was an advanced start it would place it near me uh hmm that is since i don't even have it on that doesn't matter but uh, we do have end game crisis crises as well uh i'd rather have those on just because i haven't seen i haven't seen what one of those look like yet so uh, i kind of want to <laughs> i probably should turn that off because that might destroy everything but i'm uh i'm in it to win it and uh <laughs> uh games are automatically saved regularly to a single file so if for some reason i have to go back uh, i better hope that it hadn't saved before that uh, otherwise it's you know i'm not going to be able to do it <laughs> and uh, problems will be permanent or as permanent as the game would want me to have them because uh boy oh boy <laughs> it would be very permanent or as permanent as uh, I'm willing to allow okay let's uh, play let's play the game the Empire of Felinae there we go ruler Tomas of course me <laughs> in the eons since the first primitive felon communities took shape in the meadows and forests of Felinae our civilization has spread and prospered. Countless nation states formed as we advanced through the technological ages, warring against each other until only one remained. Although the fighting was often brutal, those who survived nurtured a martial tradition that has prevailed to this day. 
Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane Network, the finest minds of the Empire of Felinae have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Begin! Alright. And... We start... Where, where, where's our galaxy at? Okay. Okay, we're on the far left side. All right. Not too bad. Not far left. Uh, middle left. We have some room to expand. Should there not be empires in our way? Here's hoping. In the meantime, let us get in and uh, have our science ship survey the system. Survey the whole system. That works for me. And then we'll get started on science, technology. Uh, what should we do? Fusion power. Yes. Boy, will fusion power be a necessary thing very soon. Okay, planetary unification. That works. Propaganda broadcasts. Technically, I don't have to use the edicts that I unlock. Technically, I don't have to use any of the things I unlock. But they'll be there. That's the main thing. Alright, so... Should I go for... I mean, they're... They're good at materials. So should I just go with nano-composite materials and get knock that out of the way? Or should I make them do the improved spaceport, which will be very useful uh, later on? Uh, at the same time, I know that the armor will probably be useful to at least start getting worked up. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We'll call that good. Um, I was about to say his specialty is in void, uh, void stuff as well, but uh, technically he doesn't have any of that to work on, so uh, we'll... We'll uh, move on from that for now. All right. Now we continue. Having our science ship move around and uh, get a good accounting of what's in our system. Sounds good to me. In the meantime, let's check on the planet. Eh. Planet is pretty basic. I would say. Pretty basic setup. A higher number of uh, settlement spots than normal. I like that. Is that like 19? Yeah, 19. I was not wrong. Okay, cool. Um, I might want to knock this out of the way because power is a good one to try and build up early. And, uh... Food ends up kind of being secondary. Uh, as long as you keep on top of it as well as you need to. It ends up being pretty okay. You end up not really needing it all that much. The first fleet as well. Um, let's see if we can recruit a leader. Ooh. Someone at the age of 27. Rather young. But a fleet logistician keeps the ship upkeep at a uh, lower rate. I could go for resilient, which adds another 25 years to their lifespan, but I kind of like having fleet logisticians. So we'll uh, pop them into place. Aro Swami. Arohi Swami, rather. Uh, that's, that's a name. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to check my other scientist's name as well. Uh, Makalo Thwain. Makalo Thwain. Dwight Bellflower. And Lisa Button Boyan. Okay. And I'm the weird one out with Tomas. Tile <laughs> blocker cleared. Perfect. That means... I can... Yes. I have to use the uh, control pad to control things, so if you hear clicking, that's why. I apologize, but that's the only way to 
make the cursor move. I might move them over here while they develop. I can move populations if I need to, but uh, it's not, you know, it's not something I'll try to do all the time. Because usually they'll pop up in places that they need to be. But uh, every once in a while you have to move them around uh, given the needs of the population and uh, what you need to be focusing on. That said, um, some of these things that I should also get moving. Eh, well, I'll wait on them for now. In the meantime, maybe I can... Oh, yeah. The ship designing. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot about that. Give me a second. Bishop, Volga, Brazil, Marco Polo, Bataan, Pluto. I've never really figured out how to build the defense platforms or any of those things. I don't know what I have to do to build them. I will have to look that up. But everything else I've built and used before. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, let's go to the Corvette, because that will be our main ship as of right now. Our main combat ship. And since that's all I have, I will throw in fission reactors everywhere. And nuclear vessels uh, <laughs> is the only weapon I have, so that will be what that is. And I'm going to change the name of these just to uh, Lynx class. There we go. Just to keep the uh, cat theme going because I am that son of a bitch. <laughs> Alright, let's save. And let's delete the other one just so I don't accidentally build one of those. Uh, in the meantime, I think the fleet now will have to upgrade, which is fine. I'm gonna... Ships upgraded. Beautiful. And I also turned it up a little bit faster in the speed. So that way the game will move along a little faster. Uh, dismiss. I will probably be using uh, the pause function uh, <laughs> very, very heavily, but uh, at the same time, it's to make sure that uh, I haven't fucked everything over. Considering this is an Iron Man run, kind of important. All right, so with that in mind, what do we got? Uh, no modules as of yet. We'll be getting that later. Um, I should probably add a couple ships. A couple. Key phrase. And let's... Yeah, there we go. Two more. Two more is fine. At least have a somewhat okay size to our... Uh, Space Navy. Space Force. <laughs> We're gonna have a Space Force. Okay. Alrighty. I'm gonna shut the fuck up about that. <laughs> because that's, that's a whole thing. A whole thing and a half. Have, have my freaking people... Has my science ship not found one thing of value in our star system? You've got to be kidding me. Construction complete. Okay, that's good. At least that's completed. No way. No. No, you're lying to me. There's no way that there's nothing of value. There's no way. You're lying to me. You're absolutely lying to me. No. No. 
System survey complete. Okay. Anomaly found. Ooh. Found an anomaly. Hmm. Interesting. The system has been surveyed, at least. Massive storms are visible in the upper atmosphere of this gas giant. It might be worth the effort to study them in more detail. Well, I mean, you're there. Hopefully it turns something up. Let's do it. Just considering there's nothing else going on in our solar system, I guess. Oh my god. That is annoying. Not a single thing. Not a single fucking thing. Please tell me it gives me something. Please tell me it gives me something. Frequently experiences massive and extremely violent storm systems in its atmosphere. Several dozen persistent storms are visible from orbit, with winds often reaching speeds in excess of 700 meters a second. Whoa. The cause of these storms is not immediately apparent, as we have found nothing in the planet's climate model that would explain them. Our scientists are interested in studying this anomaly. Well, I mean, I bet. Let's, uh, let's get a... Since this is the only thing that's worthwhile in our system, let's get a research station built up. In the meantime, let's have them explore the worlds next to us, which apparently have... Whoops. Have multiple... Maybe... Maybe colonizable planets close by. Maybe. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to see how that pans out. Unar Patch. The Unar Patch. That sounds weird. <laughs> Is there any other weird things going on in our galaxy? Ooh. The... The Herantes Dust Clouds. Oh! Discovery of alien life. The Von Braun has made a startling find on Dossal 3. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we have an encountered life forms that did not originate on Felinde. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believe we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found in, on Dossal 3 are sentient, it's likely only, only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. Interesting. The Herantes Dust Clouds. Okay, that was a save. Sometimes hitches when it saves. The Jakira ja patch. A lot of patches around here. It is a buzz with the, the Empire of Felinae is a buzz with the news of alien life found by the ISS Von Braun. While hardly intelligent by Felinian standards, the fascinating beings easily classify defy easy classification rather. Blah, 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 blah and hint at the immense complexities and possibilities of the universe. Okay. That is also another thing. Uh, when making... <laughs> when making these species, you actually have to get in there and make up everything in regards to the species, like name, um, the way the adjective works uh pretty much all of that it is kind of cool how much in depth you have to go to make an alien species and that's why i kind of have you know have my couple that i like <laughs> and specifically this one that i'm currently running with because uh i mean i made them i made them with my own two hands kind of so you know kind of cool. It's kind of cool and I want to keep playing them if I can. Because, you know, I made them. They're mine. Construction complete. Completed the construction of the research station. Good. Good. And now they're just going to sit there until I find oh, something that's found. interesting. Like this. Something moves with near purpose down on Dossal 2A. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll have them look into that before they continue on. 
investigating. Eventually there will be so many things that it'll be hard to keep track of, but right now there's not much that needs to go on. And I'm not willing to spend the extra extra minerals just to get another science ship going when eventually I'll have too many sp uh, science ships in the uh, entirety of the thing. One species native to Dussel 2A has, according to the ISS Von Braun orbiting the planet, achieved a tentative mastery of the planet. Science officer Hu Huang, Hu Huang, I'm, I'm assuming that's how it's supposed to be pronounced, uh, proposes that we should monitor their development closely and maybe even help them along if possible. Something to keep in mind for the future. Hmm. Interesting. We found a species that might, might be sentient or close to it. Following previous discoveries of lower forms of life, the Felinian capital receives news of the ISS Von Braun's observations of beings with impressive, if latent, cognitive abilities and great evolutionary potential. Science officer Hu Huang's report is received with marked enthusiasm. <sighs> Sorry about that, my throat is starting to die. Actually, give me a second, I'll try and deal with that a little more thoroughly. Sorry about that, okay. I was pretty sure even a uh, quick drink of my tea is not going to help. So I uh, had to very quickly clear that. Anyway, we continue on. Investigating Dossel. Complete. Oh, okay. Never mind. We now move on to the Zipir system. Eventually, we will have too many science ships if I try building, you know, a whole bunch of science ships. So, at this point, I'm just going to hold back. Then again, some of them could eventually start helping with research. So, I mean... It might be a good idea to keep building more. Maybe, maybe, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm thinking... Uh, a little too... Maybe a little too harshly. On, uh, having too many science ships. Perhaps, perhaps it might be a good idea to, uh, work on a couple more. Have another one on the way. Might be a good idea. Ooh! Traditions! We have a tradition available. Uh, these are things that will eventually pop up every once in a while, so you can... Uh, adopt a new tradition in the uh, in the style of what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, bettering your species and its culture. Uh, I can go for prosperity, diplomacy, the discovery, harmony, expansion, domination, and supremacy. Early on, um, maybe expansion. Uh, at the same time, uh, the adoption effect, reducing the costs of research stations would be nice. Then again, having that for mining station build costs would be very nice. That way I bring more in and only spend, uh, a certain amount getting those things online. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. Especially considering minerals are... Something that can be very useful to have. Uh, mainly to get uh, things constructed, get things moving, get them rolling along. It's probably the best if I start with this for now. And then I'll move on to a different tradition in a little bit. Uh, probably discovery after that. But for right now, I think that's our best plan. Even though there is not a lot going on in our neck of the universe, eventually it will. Eventually there will be something. Uh, I think... Construction I think, complete. Yes, there we go. Once we get the other ship online, I'm going to get them moving along. I'm going to recruit another scientist 
Meticulous, you say? I, d I never double-checked. Hu Huang. I wanted to see their traits real quick. Uh, people. They were careful. Uh, especially careful when approaching unknown elements. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I wanted to make sure. So they're good as a, a science ship person. That's that's good. Uh, recruit a new leader. Meticulous. Uh, the discovery chance is high, but they're already fairly advanced in age. Um, very, very advanced. Ugh. Also, uh, because of our talented uh, trait, all of these guys start at skill level 2 instead of 1, like most species would have. Huh. And then there's Pedro, whose expertise is statecraft, which is okay. Um, Mira Pushkov, expertise in rocketry. Uh, the youngest one here. Uh, it's... You know what? It's fine. It's fine. I'll, I'll pick up Ahmad. Ahmad just... Uh, Jamshidi. <laughs> Ahmad Jamshidi. I'll pick them up. Eventually, I might change names just so I can make it easier for me to pronounce them. <laughs> but, right now, this is fine. The ISS Grissom shall... Whoops, not there. Go in this direction to survey systems around the Unar patch. I will have them work their way around to eventually hitting the Unar patch right here. Slowly. They have to work through all the systems there first. But, uh, that'll be how that goes. And, uh, yeah. Sounds good to me. And as other upgrades will pop up, I'll be able to get them onto those ships. And then they'll have a little bit more protection, a little bit more, you know, things going on for them. I'll, I'll eventually also have to work on getting uh, the ship's uh, designs Result updated. complete. Hey! Ancient warring tribes, historical nations in conflict, now unified in empire. We must not, will not crumble. So now I have a little bit more influence coming in, which is good. I just realized I haven't adjusted my food stuff at all. Fuck. Uh, not that I'm losing anything, but uh, it's probably a good thing to get that to a larger stockpile. Uh, which I'll get fixed in a moment. Um, centralized command, army upkeep, uh, knock down a notch, orbital hydroponics. I've, I've never run into a situation where I need orbital hydroponics. Most of the time I can deal with food just, uh, with the planets that I have in my control. I've, I've never really run into a situation where I need orbital hydroponics but uh then again i mean eventually i might have to just because i need something uh to make <laughs> to make my scientists do anyway um heritage site physical reminders of how far we have come both instill a reverence for past achievements and bolster ambitions for the future i think that might be a good idea that might be a good idea. I'll go with that. Go with that for now. Sounds good to me. Alright. Nebulae give a 30% travel speed penalty to ships in interstellar flight. Oh. Shit. <laughs> Should have thought of that. Oh well. Anyway. System uh, survey complete. Maybe should deal with that now. Demographics, budget, 
That's not what I need. Uh. Shit. How do I change that again? Fuck, I, I thought I remembered the button. Uh. The system has been fully surveyed. I'll check on that in a second. Um, is it policies? Your society? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, food stockpiling. Minimal. Uh, I'm going to have a large, a large stockpile because we can never know when disaster and famine will strike. A large stockpile of food will let us to weather. That's uh, probably a translation error. Uh, will let us to weather bad circumstances without our population suffering. That is a good idea. Ups it to 5,000. And considering we bring in enough food as it is, that's probably a good thing to be moving into. It will take uh, 10 years for it to be official, but at the same time, it will start right away. So, there's that. Uh, tolerate presentience. Tolerate? Oh. Because the other option is exterminate. <laughs> exterminate! Exterminate! Okay, I should stop. <laughs> I should stop. Because, uh, you know, Daleks are overplayed. <laughs> well, Dalek-like things are overplayed. Alright. Ooh, Sapir has some... Found. Ooh, some... Uh, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da energy credit... Uh, things to pick up at some point. Yilan 3 seems to exhibit one and only one interesting geological feature. Let's have him look into it. Check out what that one and only one feature is. Hope this is almost fully developed as a population. So, let's put in the power plant to uh, exploit that resource there. Because by the time they fully grow, that power plant will be ready and waiting for them to use it. Sounds like a good idea to me. Because it is. Alright. Wow. I only had it set to 125. Why is there like three colonizable planets within my reach? I call shenanigans. Okay, expansion planner. Ooh. A thorough geological survey of Yilan 3 by the ISS Grissom reveals nothing of interest. In fact, it is extraordinarily uninteresting. Its only defining feature is its lack of defining features. There are depressions and elevations, yes, but on the whole, the surface of Yilan 3 can be regarded as unnaturally flat. I'm going to resist the Patanko jokes that are now flooding my brain. <laughs> but okay. Likewise, the native flora and fauna are strikingly docile and unworthy of attention. That's good. Yilan 3. Oh! Oh, that's a, one of the colonizable planets. Okay, cool. Modifiers. Let's look at that. High gravity. That might be that might be why it's uh, as flat as it is. That might be why it's Patenko. <laughs> that might be why it's Patenko. Uh, high quality mi minerals. Hmm. An abundance of high quality minerals in this planet's crust makes mining here a lucrative business, as I can tell by that four right there. Yeesh. Fuck, man. That's, this is a good... This this one we have to... This one we have to keep pinned as a definite... A definite place to go. Uh, Zipir is... Eh, not... Not special. Neither is Docile 3. Zipir 2 and Docile 3, they're not that special. Not that cool. Yilan 3, though. Yilan 3. I, I have a good feeling about Yilan 3. We, we, we're going to go there for sure. When we get colony ships built up. Colony? 
colony ships. <laughs> colony ships of Felinde. <laughs> we will be sending them there. Absolutely. That is a that's a good plan. I like that plan. Have our first colony world. Sounds good to me. All right. Anomaly found. Oh. Oh, a 40% failure risk. Ah. Scanning the star unveils a small object in rapid orbit. Its small size and high velocity makes it difficult for our sensors to isolate. I might just leave it for now. I think I know what it is. But I'm just going to leave it for now. Because that 40% failure rate... Uh, it's, it's concerning. I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk it at all. That would set me back a lot if I did it. Anomaly found. This? Not so bad. This one's not so bad. A weak distress signal originates from the superheated surface of Yunochi. Yunochi? I think Yunochi. I think that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, Yunachi 1. Okay. Interesting. I will come back to that one in uh, the Yilan system in a little bit. Because I think... Yeah, the other one was Yunachi. Right over there. So that's fine. There are some anomalies in the solar system we can research. Yeah, I know. I know. Ah, that doesn't mean I'm going to do it. Complete. Surface construction queue has been completed. Cool. And the population was up and running exactly as I said it would be. Awesome. So now we have more power coming in. Beautiful. Intercepting the distress signal, the ISS Von Braun sends a probe down to the volatile surface of Yuno Yunachi. I'm going to keep fucking that up. I'm sure. <laughs> Yunachi 1. It seems an unregistered freighter recently crashed on the planet. Whatever it was carrying has been reduced to an ashen sludge. But some data from the navigation computer can be recovered and survey data for the system reconstructed. Sure. Make it so. So now I have an entire... Entire wealth of the survey info for... Ooh. Yunachi has a lot of things going for it. Hmm. Interesting. Gonna have to keep that in mind. Well, since, uh... Now the Von Braun won't be doing much, if anything, System sitting around here. Complete. Let's, uh... Have them run around a little bit. Survey this system, this system, this system. And slowly make our way around. Just very slowly make our way around before we get back to the home system. There we go. Sounds good to me. How's our research doing? Oh, they're doing okay. Oh, I, uh, that's fine. It's fine by me. We are now exploring systems just outside our home galaxy. Well, our home system, rather. Because technically, this entire place is the galaxy. So... We are now exploring things just outside of our home system. This is fucking amazing. <laughs> We're fucking in space, man. We're in space. We're in space. Okay, I'm going to stop. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I think I'm going to double check real quick. Population... Uh, developing over in the food 
area. We, Anomaly might, found. we might need to actually build up a farm there. Impressive structures litter a small area on the surface of Kildatha 1, practically begging for some archaeological work. Playful ruins? Sure. Yeah, we'll do it. I'll let that, uh, let that population grow a little more before I build up the farm there, but that is uh, definitely in the plans because we're starting to go a little further down when it comes to uh, food production. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. We might actually have to follow what the population wants to do. Just a little. Just a little bit. Rally point. Ooh. The structures on Kildatha 1 are not as old as as we first believed. That, that noise was weird. It seems to be a playground or amusement park of some sort. Science officer Hu Huang notices or notes that many of the contraptions are highly complex creations that we can learn much from and that, to the builder's alien eyes, this might have been a cutting-edge sensor array or even a gigantic art installation. Regardless, to us felons, felons, rather. <laughs> it looks mostly like a place where you would take your young and let them amuse themselves. Intriguing. Interesting. Hmm. Cool shit. Weeks after the ISS Von Braun's latest fruitful exploratory survey, Valinian xenologists are practically falling over themselves to publish their takes on the findings on Kildatha 1. This fevered storm in the scientific community has had some negative, yet temporary, impact on pursuit in other fields. Well, I mean, everyone's excited because, oh shit, there's alien life, holy fuck. I can't really blame them. I think uh, humanity would be even worse. Research hey! Complete. Leveled up. Cool beans. Ooh, research completed as well. Uh, com hey, we completed research on fusion power. Hells yeah. Nuclear fusion process... <laughs> Nuclear fusion processes generate a great amount of power, but without many of the risks associated with fission power. I can talk, really. I can. But yeah, absolutely. A good idea to be doing. Hmm. Deflectors. That's something we should probably be working on. Then again, working on power plants would be good too. And having extra research speed would be very useful. I'll go research, feet, uh, research speed just because it helps on the grand scheme of working to get better uh, technologies faster. I think that's what I'm going to go with right now. Uh, that said, uh, nanocomposite materials is almost done. Heritage sites is a little bit closer. Not all the way done yet. But uh, we're doing good. We're making good progress. Better progress than I expected. And that's saying something. Because I didn't expect much. <laughs> I was a little off-put when our home system had basically nothing in regards to strategic resources or anything. Uh, like, well, I, mean, I guess everything's technically a strategic resource, but I didn't have any real sort of uh, usefulness outside of the physics research on the one gas giant but i mean it's good that we're this far along it's good that we're this far along we found a possible colonizable planet that we will get to in a bit but for now we're going to end this episode thank you all so much for watching click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more and click the like button if you like this particular video and share in comments we can bring more people into this community we can talk about the games we're playing together and i will see you all in the next episode and uh, we absolutely, 
This is an absolutely fun game, and I can't wait to show you guys how crazy it can get. <laughs> but it won't be for a while yet. It won't be for a while. Uh, mainly when the aliens start to show up. That's going to be when it gets cool. But anyway, this has been the one the only Stray Cat playing games, getting into space exploration, and eventually space integration with other species. Uh, wink, wink, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just making decent progress for once for you.